New Zealand is back in lockdown. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article because New Zealand is back in lockdown. The PM announces a week-long lockdown after new cases have been detected. Well, there you go. They've been plunged back into a week-long lockdown. Now, before we go through this, let's, let's get a bit of perspective here. Let's jump over to the Johns Hopkins uh, map here. We can see here's New Zealand. It's, well, very isolated. They really should have just joined the Federation, you know, but I understand why they didn't. And frankly, I respect them for not joining. Now, let's, if we click on this here, we can see they've ha they have had 2,372 cases with 26 deaths. Their active cases are, well, 66. 2,280 people have recovered in New Zealand, guys. You've got to remember the recovery rate, everyone. Okay, people are uh, getting really scared. The incident rate is 44, uh, 49.19 per 100,000 people. And the fatality rate is 1.1%, so it's quite low. People are getting very scared about this, but you need to look at it in perspective. Uh, at one point, I was updating the daily recovery numbers. It's kind of a bit of positive news with regards to this because you, the media will, negative news, gets more clicks, it makes more revenue. Okay, that, that's, that's the reality. I will do a positive news, on, uh, news piece on YouTube and the same people that say, you never talk about anything positive, Florian, you're a doomer. And they'll, they'll, I, they won't see it because it won't come up in their feed because they only consume negative news. <laughs> So shall we, we should be celebrating the people that are recovering, guys, and keep that in the forefront of our mind. Because here's the thing, guys, you know, COVID ain't going to be the last one, okay? Part of life. The greater um, human population that is growing around the world, the greater interaction we have with nature, the more chances there are of something like this occurring. You know, our population on the planet is going to peak, I think, what, 2050, and then it will start declining. So, you know, that'll probably be... That'll probably be the peak of these type of illnesses. We'll, we'll have to see. And the more, more, well, the more deadly they are, they usually, uh, they peter out because they can't expand as much. You want a virus, a virus wants to live in, in some, you know, perverse forms, in symbiosis with the host so it can keep going. It needs to be able to spread. So it becomes less, um, less lethal the more virulent it gets over time. So let's look at this. Auckland will go into a heart, into alert, Level 3 lockdown for 7 days from 6 a.m. tomorrow. So that's today. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinta Ard has announced. The rest of the country will go into level 2 for a week after 6 a.m. tomorrow. It comes after a new COVID-19 case was detected in the community this afternoon. The new case went to the GP in the afternoon yesterday for a COVID test, then went to the gym after that. She said that was frustrating. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you think you have it, and you went for a test, why are you going to the gym, okay? I mean, come on. Here, here's the thing. You've got to understand, even if you're not worried about it, even if the mortality statistics are so low, if you're young and healthy and you're, you're at a very low risk, if, if you've got low, if you're not obese, so your chance of hospital, hospitalization is much lower. But if you go to the gym, the people are going crazy at the moment here. People are freaking out and scared. You, of course, you're gonna, you're gonna do this. They're going to go nuts. And remember, lockdowns win elections, guys. They win elections. So if you don't like, you know, maybe, maybe they're a, you know, a Jacinta fan. If you don't like her, why are you giving her the tools to increase her support? Look at what happened with Andrews, guys. His support is at record levels. Western Australia, you know, the opposition leader has just lied down and died. I'm not even running, pretty much. Here in Queensland. Okay, people are afraid. It's because of the media in many ways. And they feel like their leaders are taking care of them when they do these lockdowns. I did a video looking at uh, DA Henderson. You know what, we'll, I'll bring this up because I'm not making this stuff up. I'm not just prattling as some bald YouTuber, although I am. But I looked at this because this isn't the first time, guys. This isn't the first time that this was, you know, discussed, that these lockdowns were suggested. These, these are ancient approaches to mitigating virus spread. 
you know, disease mitigation measures by D.A. Henderson, a one-hour video where I go through a letter which he and others wrote to critic criticize suggestions for lockdowns and interventions in the spread of, what was it, bird eye, the, the bird flu? So, and, you know, he, he just has a, you know, he won the President's Medal and contributed a significant part in the eradication of polio on the planet. So, he kind of knows what he's talking about. So, if you haven't watched this video, I recommend you do, or click on the research, the letter that he wrote and all the evidence that they put forward. But the problem is it's now, it's now just accepted. So many politicians have implemented these harsh lockdowns that if you don't do it, you'll be a pariah. The news will just tear you to pieces. So if some fool goes to the gym after getting tested, well, he's handing the next election to Jacinta. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, I guess it's the same thing as people won't put coffee car, uh, shopping trolleys away, you know? Auckland went into a snap three-day lockdown just over two weeks ago after three new cases were detected. So back into lockdown. Public venues, Mr. Arden said, will be closed for seven days. Gatherings outside of bubbles are prohibited. She said this means any all sports games now need to be cancelled, including the Auckland round Auckland round to the round the bay. See, this is the thing, this is gonna have an economic impact. Think about all the small businesses that have ordered food stuff that now it's all going to go off in a week. What if you had a wedding planned or a gathering planned? All that money is just gone. Because one guy got a test and then went to the gym. I mean, come on, mate. You, you know, pump an iron. I know it's important. You know, I know it's very important. And I'm, I am guilty of not keeping up my lifting. I wouldn't even call it a lifting regimen of, of keeping up the habit of trying to learn how to do it and get into it. But... I mean, look, this is the damage you're doing to the economy there, guys. Oh, boy. She asked Aucklanders to, to again work from home and for children to stay home from school. Or what about all the people that went to the gym during that period could be asked to be restricted? Could it be asked to behave themselves rather than lock down the whole country? I mean, that could be another approach. But they're so scared about this thing. Supermarkets will remain open. There's no need to rush to your supermarket, she said. So everyone post links to or send me photos of uh, rushed toilet paper buying in New Zealand. The borders around Auckland will be re-established. Police are working to set those up now. People at high risk of illness are encouraged to stay home, she said. The cabinet, I mean, isn't she married? Shouldn't she be Mrs.? Anyway, she said the cabinet will have check-ins along the way in terms of alert levels, but now there are a number of levels of exposure. This will be some time, this will take some time, but at this, this stage, it's like the Auckland will stay at level three for the whole seven days. But for the rest of the country, the level two setting will be review, reviewed throughout the week. The new case. The new case was a family member of a student from Papototo High School. The student had tested negative three times before and had no known symptoms. That means there's no current link to the cluster. Okay, so, uh, okay, I'm not feeling, if he'd been tested three times negative, probably, and he's going for another test, can't feel too bad from going to the gym. Maybe he's just getting frustrated <laughs> with it. The latest case, uh, 21, developed symptoms on Tuesday. They were tested on Friday and the positive result was received today. Genome testing is underway. There is a strong assumption that it is from the current cluster, but that cannot be confirmed yet. Mr. Arden said, There was a cause for concern as this person has been infectious for a week and not been in isolation. Cabinet met this afternoon after the new case was detected. That per I mean, you've got to understand, they've got no symptoms. They can't even tell they've got it without the testing. This is the thing. The, the mortality of this is so low and it's so restricted to certain parts of the population. Couldn't we implement pa play, uh, procedures to protect those people? What about, here's, here's something that's going to be quite controversial. What about if you're overweight or obese or morbidly obese, then you need to restrict your movement. Everyone else is fine. You know, we put scales at every shop. Okay, if you go in, if you're obese, you're not allowed to go in. That has a significant impact on your chance of being hospitalized with this. And isn't the, isn't the strategy to mitigate the burden on ICUs? 
But Florian, you're fat shaming. Well, uh, yeah, it is. And you should be ashamed. I don't I understand why. And a lot of it is probably because, here's, here's the kicker, it's probably because all the advice you've gotten from the government about eating healthy and all the nutritionists, it's all out of date and BS. That's what it is. You know, look up low carb down under, guys. Or go meet RX and just eat steak for a month and see how you feel. See how much weight you lose. That would have a better impact on people's lives. It would reduce our ICU load and it would also reduce other healthcare issues as well. But then, you know, can't make all the money from selling those magic pills that probably don't work. Anyway, back to this. So there is a, there is a, my concern is that it's a real issue that can significantly affect your chances of getting hospitalized, which people could manage themselves. But because we've been fed the wrong advice from government and every, you know, every professional in that industry, the research is a joke, they're going to lock us all down. So that person had been to a number of well-populated sites. Director General of Health Ashley Bloomfield said testing to, of other household members had been completed. The mother had tested positive for the COVID-19. The person was tested by their GP yesterday, but has been infectious since last week. He works part-time at the airport. More sequencing is underway and will be back later tonight, he said. That would likely show a link to the current cluster. Mr. Bloomfield said it was very unlikely that any of the tests from recent outbreaks are false negatives. So rules not followed. The new case went to the GP in the afternoon. Yesterday for the COVID test, they went to the gym after that. I mean, come on, mate. But if he's had three failed tests, he'd probably think, oh, I'm fine. I don't... I mean, you can understand. Maybe he's had to quarantine all these times with these last tests and it came negative, came negative, came ne negative. And he feels completely fine. We can, we can all appreciate that. I'm sure we all can. Ms. Island said the rules have not always been followed in the latest outbreak. How How is one person an outbreak? Anyway, people who should have been isolated when weren't, she said. She said humans make mistakes and NZ won't succeed if we turn on one another. She's, she said she was confident that the message to isolate was passed on, but despite that communication, the advice was not followed. Unfortunately, we have still had breaches of requirements in this case, she said. She said it needs to be kept in mind that we're dealing with young people. She reminded New Zealand that she was not asking any more than was necessary to keep others safe. That's what it is. Keep others safe. Think of the children, everyone. You know, particularly in Australia and New Zealand, if, if it didn't blow up in the news, would you even be worried? Please follow the rules on behalf of everyone, she said, adding... We do not have the ability to take enforcement action, or we do have the ability to take enforcement action if we need to for people breaking the rules. There's the threat, guys. There's the threat right there. Remember that. Do as you're told, pleb. Behave. She said she needs people to still get tested, and they can't be afraid to do that. See, this is the problem. They're not going to get tested. It's, it's out there in the community. I mean, he didn't even know he had it. He's only getting in trouble now. They're only getting locked down now because he got tested. And people will think, oh, you know what? No, I feel fine. I had a colleague. He got. He thought he had it. And he went there. He got tested. He had, was coughing a lot. And he had nothing. It's something else. Mr. Bloomfield said the situation was challenging. He said the contact tracing system had come under pressure this week. From one venue. Ms. Arden said New Zealand was very close to being in a more certain future as the country waits for vaccines. She calls on New Zealanders to just hang in for a little bit longer. Remember when it was just for one or two weeks? During the last week, there will, there's been a significant testing in South Auckland, Mr. Bloomfield said. He said the Minister of Health is seeing people with muscle aches and general weakness and fatigue as COVID-19 symptoms. He's calling on anyone who has these symptoms to get tested. I mean, you could just be working hard, guys. I cleared my entire backyard. That exhausted me. We're now in a position where we have a number of potential exposure events, he said. Those people need to, need to be prevented from going out and infecting others. Ms. Arden said, even if Auckland was still at level three, this might not have been prevented. We have every expectation that people will follow the rules, she said. How Kiwis reacted to the news. Booze greeted the alert level announcement at the Joseph Park versus Junior Far fight at Spark Arena in Auckland. 
But cheers erupted when the crowd was told the boxing was allowed to continue. The announcer told the crowd the news, but then said, but hey, we're going to have these fights. On the Parker fight, she said there was no need to be called off. The Prime Minister said there needs to be a cutoff, which was 6 a.m. tomorrow. This means people can't go to church. If you heard this request now, we want you to act now, she said. Support for business. Finance Minister Grant Robertson said that since the lockdown is more than seven days, business support now kicks in. This triggers the wage subsidy scheme that applies nationwide. This will be paid in a lump sum, he said. He said businesses can receive both the wage subsidy scheme and the new alert level 2 subsidy scheme. He said the Minister of Social Development has been providing support to the Papatoto area. He is asking anyone in the area who needs to get it to contact the MSD. He said there are some families where a disruption like this will cause them significant concern. The government has budgeted four to five hundred million in the coming seven days. There you go. Half a million, half a billion dollars, guys. They've got that buffer already. Yes, yeah, sure, sure you do. No, you've got a willing, willing pool of tax cattle that you'll milk it from in the future. Future generations will pay for this. I wonder if they're going to look back and think that this was a case of mass hysteria on a global level. Mr. Robinson said the worst thing for the country and the economy right now would be a massive outbreak. Based on previous lockdowns, Auckland Level 3 and the rest of New Zealand at Level 2, the cost of the economy was $440 million a week, according to the ASB. So the nation's on lockdown, or nationals. Nationals leader... Judith Collins said the new lockdown in Auckland and Level 2 for the rest of the country will be disappointing for all. No one wants to be yo-yoing in and out of lockdown, she said. National said the decision to go out of lock Level 3 on February 17 was a bold and ambitious call. At the time, we still didn't know the source of the original case. And there were two new community cases on of the more transmissible strain that day. And not all of the high school students had been tested. Now Auckland is back in lockdown with all the consequences that brings. We need to consider tougher penalties against those who are not following public health advice around isolation and testing. All New Zealanders will be frustrated at the level of non-compliance. Relying on people to do the right thing looks to have reached its limits. And we may need tougher penalties to make sure everyone follows the rules. So the Nationals are calling for tougher penalties, guys. More, more police intervention. New Zealand's going a funny path, isn't it, everyone? Did you think this little island on the edge of the world would become a, a you know, quite authoritarian state? Some of the footage coming out of there is, well, shocking, really. Auckland Mayor's message. I understand Aucklanders' frustrations at having to return to Level 3 lockdown, with the disruption it causes to everyone's lives and the impact it has on businesses, many of which are already struggling, the Mayor said. However, the consequences of letting the virus spread would be far more disruptive and would put people's lives at risk. No one wants to be in lockdown, but it is the most effective means. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> Has no one looked at this stuff from Henderson? Has no one looked at it? Guys, seriously, you know, I'll, uh, if we have a look here, this is, I mean, you can find the link to it, but here's the reference. How Free Society Deals with Pandemics According to Legendary Epidemiologist and Smallpox Eradicator Donald Henderson. Okay, it was smallpox, not polio, sorry. I keep thinking of polio because, well, that was the Rotary Club that I was in. That was their focus. You know, just, just a little thing, smallpox. Yeah, yeah. Not, not that big a deal. What would he know? Guys. And read through it. Or listen to my podcast, guy. My one hour reading through into a discussion of this. You know, large-scale quarantine measures, home quarantine. They go through all of these issues. Prohibitation of social gatherings, school closures. They still want to keep schools closed in America when the private schools are still open. The unions are pushing for it, guys. They want to keep your kids dumb and uneducated. Probably keeps more people voting for them. So. <sighs> we're in a much... This is the problem. This is a problem. There's only you can't even come out and propose alternatives now. We're in a much better place than almost any other country in the world because of our strong collective response. No, it's because you're on the edge of the world. That's why. You're in the middle of nowhere. Okay, you're in New Zealand. 
that, that that's why you're in a much better place it's got nothing to do with your collective response you, you yeah bit of confirmation bias there i think Aucklanders are all hands at this now we know what to do to beat the virus and we will get on and do it that's it you know four new locations of interest the minister for health has released four new locations of interest tonight hunter plaza burger king highland park your health pharmacy and pack and save manuka more locations of interest will be up on the minister's of health website soon anyone who visits these locations is to be considered a casual contact of a COVID-19 case out of an abundance of caution no specific times have been mentioned by the ministry so far meanwhile a gym in Papato has been closed today after being told a person who was tested positive had visited twice including on Friday the exact location has not been confirmed by health officials but it is located in Hunter Plaza City Fitness Papato a Papatoto informed members in an email tonight it had been notified by Auckland Regional Public Health that the person who tested positive for COVID-19 had visited a Papatoto location on specific times and dates. We've been advised the Auckland Regional Health Board will contact directly anyone who was in the gym during the time and designated as a close or casual plus contact who should follow the steps below, the email said. Focus on a KFC worker. Health official focus remains on KFC in the Auckland suburb of Botany. A family member of one of the Papatoto high school students who tested positive had been told to stay home and isolate, but instead went to work at the fast food restaurant on Monday. The Minister for Health said earlier today there were three categories of contact related to KFC. 11 people in the first category, a close contact plus, who also worked there are now 14 day isolation. Members of the public who entered the store at the time are close contacts who must get tested today and casual plus contacts who who went drive through should also get tested today. Both groups should isolate until they receive a negative result. Yesterday, Miss Arden said she was like everyone frustrated about the person who went to work at KFC. This is the problem. <laughs> the biggest issue with this is most people don't even feel sick. If you felt sick, you felt like crap, you'd stay home. You'd want to stay home. But most people don't even feel it. Probably the probably the gym junkie guy, he wouldn't even notice it. You know? We want people to do the, do the right thing because that's what keeps everyone safe, she said. Despite this, she is warning against a mass pile-on of the person in question as that creates an environment where people are too afraid to get tested. She's asking for everyone who may have been coming into contact with the new case to do the right thing and isolate. And if they don't, she's sounding a warning this there is a section 70 order that order means a medical official or health can oblige people to isolate we have some legal footing for that and so there are rep repercussions she said earlier today prior to the largest or latest community case being revealed there was only one COVID 19 case in managed isolation so there we have it everyone new zealand is back in lockdown and the, you know some threatening threatening tones from the prime minister but somehow i think a lot of people will lap it up what do you reckon everyone because they've worked so well there's not even a discussion of other ways to mitigate this you know because not everyone is going to need icu care and wasn't that the point now it's suddenly it seems to have merged into eradication what do you reckon Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you're a fan. If you enjoy the content I produce, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.